Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. This one has me confused because I don't see any prior chat. Almost every time there's a little prior chat. So I'm wondering if I did something different this morning or I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> I think I did everything right. I don't know if there's anybody out there. Um... Let me see what's going on here, because this has got me confused. Uh, I don't see a title for this one. That would be nice if I could see what the title was. That's the other thing about this software. Once you get going, the title goes away. So, are we uh, working? It looks like so. Uh, Paul Walton just said good morning. And Misty Hill, our Misty says hi. So, I guess, and we have 14 viewers now. But I wonder if I got the wrong title. Does the title on this one say something about rat control or, or rat something? If it does, then we're good. If not, I click something got switched as I was going live there. I don't know. You know, I was thinking that maybe that got switched and that threw off everybody. Our afternoon from Ireland, says Danny Boy, I think it is. Danny boy, I get it, I get it, B-O-I. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm just wondering, uh-oh, uh Danny says no, so that means that the title doesn't have that in there, so we must have the wrong title going. It figures, it it changed on me, it, it messed me up. Um, ah, that's so frustrating, it's so frustrating. I guess people will find it. Doggone it. I'll have to change it later. I don't know if there's any way to change it on the fly now. I don't think there is. I, I had a feeling that happened because it's done that once before. Um, well, anyway, thank you for telling me. I'll, I, I don't know anything I can do about it while we're live here unless I were to kill it and start over again. What a frustrating pain. <laughs> It just, it never quits. It never quits. Just when you, and I was sitting here just calm and everything ready to go. And I thought, okay, well, we'll just go live and everything will be nice and easy. And it never is. It never is. There's always some monkey wrench that has to be thrown in the thing. It's just so weird. All right. Well, I'm going to pretend like that didn't happen and I'll change the title later. Uh, the first thing I do want to remind everyone is to put your question marks in the front of your uh, uh, statement or comment, question, whatever it is. Put question marks in front of it. That helps me find it and know that you want me to talk about it or, or address it or whatever. <clears throat> it's so frustrating. Mountain View, Arkansas. We'll be down there October 19th through the 22nd. And since the title of this video is wrong, I will tell you that the title of the video should be something about uh, we made a little more wall progress and we're going to talk about rat and mice control here on the farm. And uh, I think it's going to be interesting for you. I think I have four video clips all total to show you. Uh, <laughs> it just never quits. It, you wouldn't know how frustrating it is to, to get everything just perfect and you click on it and it just ain't perfect. Uh, 99,518 subscribers. So we're less than 400 subs or uh, just a, over 400 subscribers to go, less than 500 to go. And uh, it's growing at a rate of 24.94 as of today. We still only have 56 subscribers, or 66, I mean, <laughs> I can't even talk now, 56 viewers, so probably some of them are still sitting over there on the ap appropriate title. <sighs> what a bummer. <laughs> it just doesn't quit. It's not easy being me. You probably never heard that before. <laughs> we had our jam at Dickie's Barbecue Pit last night, and, uh, you know, I told you it was just going to be me. Well, I... Uh, Texted a few friends on Facebook that uh, are local area jammers and invited them to show up, and they did. And uh, Loretta and uh, Gina Heizinga, you've seen them on the channel before. You've seen them on our live shows, in fact. Uh, Loretta, I think, was on the one before last, and then uh, Gina was on the one, the last one we had. 
Well, anyway, Gina's husband, Rick, also plays guitar. So those, those three showed up to help me out last night, and it was a big help. Here's a little short video, or here's, a, here's one song that I uh, took of them doing this all by themselves. So here you go. Well, thank you to uh, Rick and Gina and uh, Loretta for coming and helping bail me out. Of course, I was the one taking that video, so I wasn't sitting in with them at that moment, but the rest of the evening we all played together, and it worked out pretty well. We had a medium-sized crowd, and uh, about 10 folks stayed all the way to the very end, so it was it was fun time, and uh, I again, I just say thank you to those folks for bailing me out there. That really did help. So it was a fun time last night, and everybody seemed to enjoy it. And I, yes, I'm aware that uh, we screwed up this morning with the title of the video. Uh, for those of you who are just joining me, I'm not kidding you. It said the right title on the screen up here, and I click on it. And, you know, I, in fact, this was one of the most relaxed mornings I've had getting everything ready. <laughs> I was ready ahead of time, sitting here for about 10 minutes, there's just nothing to do. <laughs> And I'm looking at the title, and it's correct. So when we go live, I click on it, and somehow it grabbed the wrong title. I don't know how it did that. So I'm sorry. But today's video is supposed to be, and I'll have to change it later to, and correct the title later, but today's video is supposed to be about uh, a little bit more wall progress and rat and mice control here on the farm. And I think it's going to be very interesting. I, I think I've put it together here, and I think you'll enjoy it. But first, let's just take my little short commute walk down to the shop, and uh, you'll see why I didn't ring the bell this morning. Well, here's my commute this morning. You can tell it's getting darker every morning. The days are getting shorter. You can hear the birds and the crows in the distance. And here's the bell. Now, I would, 
I was actually planning on ringing that this morning, but then I got to thinking, you know, it's seven o'clock, Sue's still sleeping, and we have guests in the rental house way up there, so it's probably not a good idea. I think I'll better wait and ring that after we have our vlog this morning, and I'll just record it and show it to you tomorrow. So sometimes I do actually use my head and think a little bit. Unfortunately, you'll have to wait till tomorrow though. But it is kind of dark out here this morning. The camera makes it look a little lighter than it really is. Can you hear the crows? They're going crazy again. They probably found another owl or they probably have found where that owl roosts and uh, are just after him first thing in the morning now. Can you hear him? It may not be. There's not that many crows right now, so maybe that's not the case. Usually when they find an owl or a hawk, they go absolutely bonkers and just dozens of crows will come in. Beautiful morning, just beautiful. In the 40s this morning. Well, I'm gonna turn the camera off for a moment and then I'll show you something else here in just a minute. Yeah, uh, sometimes I do actually use my head for more than a hat rack. <laughs> Not very often, but but sometimes. And I got I almost went out there and started to pull that and I thought, you know what? Sue's still sleeping, I'm pretty sure this morning. Now normally she's awake, but this morning I'm pretty sure she was sleeping, and that was mainly because I had it in mind to pull that bell. That's just that typical Rosa Luck thing again. Because often she's already up and outside even. Um, but anyway, uh, then I also thought, well, we also have guests up at the far uh, rental retreat there. And I thought it probably wouldn't be a smart idea to be ringing that thing because you can hear it pretty well all over the valley. It's pretty loud. Well, I said I had something else to show you. Um, I slacked off yesterday, didn't get a lot done, but I'll show you this anyway. Well, we're here at the pond this morning. As I said, it's still pretty darn dark. You can hear the crows in the background. They're just communicating with one another. I just love these kinds of mornings. I love hunting out here, sitting in a tree stand, just listening to the nature. It's just wonderful. Well, what I was wanting to show you is that I kind of slacked off yesterday. I only worked an hour and a half, actually an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I, went, I worked from two to 3.45. And I did this. <laughs> I added onto the wall from here all the way over to about there. So there's where the wall used to be. Kind of actually it was pretty abrupt right in there. And so I added all that on there. Had to dig all this out, of course. You can see some of the spoils. I've already hauled away five or six buckets worth of dirt and just left this little bit here and uh, so this is probably going to match the contour better and I still have to put the capstones on this but before I can put the capstones on this I want to fill it full of gravel so that's my project for today is get it filled with gravel put the capstones on and then try to bring this to an approximate final grade in here and then We'll give this one last good leveling in here, and I've, I've been having this thought that I might want to use stone, these big stone blocks, right in here. And I may want to dig all this out up to the pipe and just lay those stones in here to help hold this dirt back right over here. You know, like just kind of fill this area in with stone somehow, and I'm not sure exactly how. But I do think that needs to be done also. So I keep finding more things, but honestly, these are the kinds of things that really do need to be done. You could get ahead of yourself on a project like this pretty quickly if you don't do those things. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how lazy I was yesterday, because like I said, I only worked an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, sometimes I take off most of the day. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's what I did yesterday. I, uh, after the vlog yesterday morning, I just went up to the house and just kind of relaxed. And then I thought around two o'clock, man, I ought to get that done. So I ran down there real quick. And then, of course, I had to be at Dickie's by five, or I typically get there by five. So I worked from two to 345 there, and that's what I got done. Um, but, you know, I, whenever I do that, believe it or not, I do feel like I'm slacking off. I'm not kidding you. I know it sounds kind of stupid because most people would think, well, that's a full day's work right there. <laughs> But it's just, I don't know, it's like I told you, I'm a workaholic. I've been that way my whole life. My dad started me working when I was in the fourth grade, and I haven't been unemployed a day in my life since the fourth grade. Even even in retirement, I'm not an unemployed. <laughs> All right, so I've showed you the wall progress. Well, uh, the other part of this was about the rat control. Somebody mentioned that they'd like to see how we, how we bait these... Uh, tubes for the rats and things and and I thought well let's just take it a little step further than that and show you a little bit more so here's a video on some of that while I'm down here someone asked to see how we do the rat uh, poisoning uh, traps so here I'll just show you that I'm gonna have to turn on the light in here because it's pitch black dark for me and see I even have a lighted switch there because I can't see stuff in the dark and that turns on the front light and there's another switch way over here in hindsight i wish i had just put the two switches together but a lot of times i don't need this switch i'll turn that one on too and didn't help too much on the dark side of that uh, trailer but over here you can see it's much brighter Okay, so let's just take a look. I laid a couple of these traps in and around the trailers because I don't want them finding their way into the trailers. Here's one of those pipe traps that I was telling you about. My guess is the bait's, the bait's completely gone. Can you see that? So we'll take this one back to the shop and we'll put the bait back in there and show you how we do that. And here's another one right here. So let's see if they've eaten all the bait off of this one. And I bet they have. I did them at the same time. Sure enough, it's completely gone. You can't really see in there, but there you go. You can see. No bait. I'm telling you, we have a lot of rats around. These are all just what you call like field rats or maybe even pack rats. I'm not really sure, but uh, they're bad. And we're here at the shed. We're, it's kind of junky right now, but you can see the sawmill in here. That's where we keep our gas cans and things. And my chainsaws. There's only three or four chainsaws here right now. One, two, three, four, five, I see. And there's probably one in that box, so six chainsaws right here. Anyway, here's another one of those rat things. I put it out at the same time. You can see it's also been eaten. No bait left on it. Wow. I see another one over there. I'm going to go get that one too. Let's see if we can get to that one. Did I want, lay one over here also? Probably. Maybe not. I don't see one in here. Yeah, here's, here's one down in here. You can't see it, but I'm sure it'll be empty because it's been in here a long time, I'm sure. Yeah, it's empty. Yep, that one's empty also. Every one we've checked is completely empty. Most of these were just set out about 10 days, two weeks ago. So there's five of them to refill. And I'm sure Sue has a bunch down in her barns and things, so there's a bunch of these laying around. Yep, that's just one more reason why it's not easy being me. <laughs> You got to stay after him. I don't know if any of you guys have ever watched The Mink Man. You might want to watch him. He, well, if you're not squeamish, I mean, because he, that's what they do is they kill rats. And he's, he's trained mink and he's trained his dogs to kill rats. And they go around on farms primarily. Uh, they do it in other places too. But 
a lot of them are farms, and farms are notorious for uh, having rats because there's feed for the animals. That's one of the main things, and that draws the rats in. And, you know, you've got nooks and crannies to hide in and buildings and things, and that draws the rats in. And the rats come from the fields. You can go out in these fields and, and like, where the weeds are tall, and you'll find rat burrows, dens, whatever you want to call them, mittens. I mean, I know there's all kinds of names for it. And anyway, you'll find the rat, uh, you know, population out there in the fields is pretty, pretty strong also. So that's why you got to stay after them. And if you don't stay after them, trust me, you will have a infestation and it don't take long. And uh, that's what the mink man does. He goes in and he'll, he'll take his mink and his rat or his uh, dogs and he'll, I don't know, kill 100 rats, 500 rats. I mean, it's, it's nuts how many rats they kill. It's absolutely nuts. All right, so let me show you what we do here. First of all, we, we use a type of rat bait. This, one, this is what I'm using presently. We've changed around over the years. Um, this one seems to work okay. Uh, bait block. Now, this one, if you notice, it says uh, peanut butter flavoring. And when you open the lid, it does smell a little bit like peanut butter. Not a whole lot, but you can kind of smell a, a whiff of peanut butter there. And this is what the actual bait looks like. And it's got a, a hole in it all the way through, although usually one end's kind of clogged. And what you do is you just run the wire through the bait like this. And the reason you do this is if you don't wire it up, I guarantee you the rats will just pack it away and put it in their den or their mitten, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, and they will um, not eat it. If you wire it like this, they can't steal it, and then they, uh, d they'll eat it. And sometimes they'll only eat half of it, it'll fall off, and then they'll take that other half and hide it and, you know, but at least by that time, they're pretty much God. If they eat half of it, they'll, they'll be dead. Um, and then what we do is we just take a little short piece of pipe. This is about 13 inches long. Uh, you can, you know, I say a, a minimum of a foot long and probably 16 inches long is plenty long. And the reason we put it in here is two reasons. Number one, again, they can't carry this off. Uh, they're standing on it for one thing, and so they can't drag it away. And so they're in, and the main reason is this keeps it protected from your dogs and your cats and things like that. They can't get into this. So you, it's a little bit tricky that you have to feed it through these holes, but it's not very difficult. So I, I'm feeding it the wires through the hole there. And then you can just pull it up like this. And then you just take and twist it like a half twist around like this. You don't even have to twist it much. And the wire's fairly stiff. This is like electric fence wire, but you could use pretty much any kind of wire. And you can see there, the bait is hanging there. And that's all of those, as you saw, were already eaten off and gone. And they were put out about a week to 10 days ago. So that's how we do it here. I, I don't know. I just came up with that idea because, you know, we didn't want to just set, throw bait out loose. Well, we did that a little bit at the very beginning, not, not being educated in the process, you know. And that's not a good idea because other animals can get to it and stuff. And then somewhere along the line, I opened up some area, I don't even know what it was, and sure enough, all that stuff was piled up in there where the rats had just collected it and, and piled it up. So they're not eating it. So, you know, this, so I thought, how can I get them to eat it? How can I keep them from carrying it off? And how can I protect the other animals? So I just came up with that. And it works really well. It's way better than anything else we've ever thought of. And the other thing is that, um, uh, this pipe and stuff, you know, this is just the real thin wall pipe. And, you know, we use pipe lots of times to divert water, you know, whatever, things here on the farm. And then we'll change things and the pipe's extra or whatever. So anytime I have extra pipe, uh, I save it for this purpose and then just cut it up and do it that way. Um, here's, here's another thing about mice. You know, of course, we have our share of mice. The mice don't bother us too much as, as not, not nearly like the rats. The rats are bad, man. You, you got to keep after the rats. The rats, like I said, they will chew your wires up. Mice will too, 
But rats are much worse at chewing your uh, wires off on your cars and things. If you saw yesterday's vlog, you saw where I fixed that. And I'll probably put a video out a little more detail on that later. But this is the kind of mousetrap you want to get. Those other kinds of mousetraps just suck canal water. Um, you want to get the Victor Trap. You want to get the name brand. The other ones kind of work. But you want the main thing you want is you want this large uh, yellow uh, platform. And you put your bait in here in this little hole right there. Um, in this little hole right there. I'm trying to point to it. That little spot. I can't keep it in front of the camera. Anyway, you put your bait down in there like your... You know, peanut butter is one good bait, but really your best bait, believe it or not, is like butter or margarine. Uh, you can put two traps side by side, and I've done it many times, so I know what I'm talking about. You can put two traps side by side, one with peanut butter, one with butter. They'll go to the butter nine times out of ten. So the butter is a better uh, bait. And these kind of traps are much more sensitive and much easier to, to trip than the ones with the metal uh, trap or... I don't know, sprint, whatever you call that thing, lever, whatever. So anyway, they're much. this plastic uh, flat one is much better uh, than the metal one. Uh, the metal ones often won't spring. They won't spring. This one here, like, it sets like that. And then you can just walk, and, you know, if the mouse hits it, bingo, it comes down on your hand. That didn't feel real good, but, you know, it, it, you have to demonstrate. And... Um, this is just an old trap here. It's been laying around. Now, if you're squeamish, you won't like this because then you got to get rid of a dead mouse. But, you know, I'm not too squeamish. I've gotten rid of gazillions of them. And for me, I reuse the traps over and over. You may choose to throw the whole thing away. I get it. But for me, I just reuse these over and over. Because if, if I was buying a new trap every time I need to catch a mouse, I'd go broke just buying traps. But seriously, uh, this is the kind of trap you want. If you've got a mouse problem, get this kind of trap and you'll catch your mice. The other kinds of traps suck canal water. Um, this is the Victor and it's got the, what looks kind of like a piece of cheese on it. Uh, they do, there's copycats of this and I forget the, what the other name is that looks just like it. But get the Victor. It, it works better. The other one works sort of good, but it's not as good as that. Uh, I, again, I've tested them all. I know which ones work and that one works. So there you go. That's everything I know about mice and rat control. And boy, on a farm, you definitely need to do it. And there's plenty of other places where you need to do it too, not just farms. Okay, for those of you who have found me now and just joined, I am sorry about the title mix up again. I, as I was, I, I'm repeating myself again, but I feel like it's necessary. I... Uh, you know, I had everything ready to go this morning. One of the most relaxed mornings ever that I've done my vlog. I was just sitting here for about five, ten minutes, just nothing to do. The title was up on the screen, ready to click on it. And it was correct. It, you know, I know it was correct. And when I clicked on it, I saw there was no comments. And I went, there's always comments ahead of time. <laughs> And there was no comments. So it changed titles on me. I know it did. And sure enough, it did. So I'm sorry about that. I will uh, fix that later after we're done here. All right. But let's go ahead and, and look at what comments we do have. Uh, Paul Walton says, good morning. Misty says, hi. Uh, Danny Boy from Ireland is there. Um, there's Payday 1963. Yeah, he's showing me what the title uh, was there. Yeah, it's bad. It's just, <laughs> I don't know why that happens. That's only happened two or three times over the, all the vlogs I've done, but it's happened two or three times. It's just something has to happen. There's just something. It, it's like you just cannot get through anything without a problem. Christia Thomason is there. Hello from uh, Orlando, Florida. And then James Cop. Uh, morning from Philadelphia. And then we've got Bill Mumbo. He's got a thumbs up there. <laughs> and thank you, Bill. Um, all right. John Grimes says he's going to watch it anyway. <laughs> Timothy, uh, Timothy Murphy's Law, always ready to make things interesting. Yeah, it's Rose's Law, man. I'm seriously telling you, they named it wrong. I don't care what anybody says. It should be Rose's Law. As a wise man once said, it's not easy being me. <laughs> 
That's what Christia Thomason said. Yeah, you know what? It just isn't. I don't care what I do. There's something that has to throw a monkey wrench in it. Just always. So I'm so used to it, it doesn't even really bother me that much. Other than it just bothers me the fact that I had so many people waiting and then it changed on them, you know. That's what bothers me. It's not that it bothers me personally so much. Uh, Bill Dedrick. Uh, Jerry, have you ever met or played with Ronnie McCurry? What do you think of his mandolin playing? Well, Ronnie McCurry is one fine mandolin player. Yeah, I love... Uh, the Del McCory band, and you know, I've got a lot of their CDs. Uh, I, yeah, Del McCory is he's really top notch, and of course, his boys, Ronnie, and I forget the banjo player now, I forget his name, but you know me in names. But uh, anyway, they're all real, real, real good, top notch, absolutely top notch. Uh, let's see here, Michael Tarlar Tarlazi, uh. How for a dreadnought style guitar, is there a specific neck angle? I've heard you say that the headstock should be down below the top of the guitar, but is there a specific angle in degrees? Well, Michael, um, I have heard Randy, my buddy Randy Shardiger on YouTube, uh, I've heard him talk about that angle, and I don't remember what he said the angle was. But I don't go by the angle, quote unquote, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that if you do, but I, that's just not how I do it. Um, I do it, some of it by the seat of my pants, I'll be just truthful, but some of it I measure. And what I do is, I, and I'll tell you that an angle is tricky on something like this. And you know, you could, you can, you could just say it's black and white, one and a half percent or three percent or whatever it is and you could just say that but from one guitar to the next depending on the way the sides are in relationship to the top because you think they're perfect but they're not always perfect you know like this side could just be in a, a, a one degree and you wouldn't even hardly notice it but if it's in one degree now you've got that degree on top of the degree you're talking about to the so you can't just go by degrees. That's what I'm trying to point out. So it's better to do what I, at least I think it's better to do the way I do it. And let me get my guitar down here and try to demonstrate it. Now, I prefer not to have the fretboard on there when I'm doing this. But if the fretboard's on there, you can still kind of do it. Now, unfortunately, this is kind of like the plumber that has leaky pipes in his house. You know, this is kind of the way this is. This guitar is good and bad. As I've told you the story before, this was the very first guitar I ever built. And it broke on while I was putting the finishes on it. It fell off the rest and hit the ground and, you know, broke the neck joint. So the neck angle on this guitar is the worst of any guitar I've ever built. So I just do what I say, not what I do, okay? So anyway... The point is, if the fretboard was not on this, I would lay this straight edge on, on, the, on the flat neck without the fretboard. Again, I want to be clear. There's no fretboard on here. Pretend you don't see a fretboard. So we're laying it on here, and then we run this back to here. And I, right in here, about a millimeter and a half or about 60 thousandths, approximately a sixteenth of an inch, you know, uh, is what you want to see. You want to see a gap there, right at the, right where the saddle should be. Uh, you want to see about a sixteenth of an inch gap there. So it doesn't matter what the degree of angle is. It doesn't matter. I mean, it might be one and a half degree, might be three degrees. Doesn't matter. You, if you just lay this flat straight edge on here and get about a, a a millimeter and a half, or about sixty thousandths, or however you want to think of that. Um, you should be good to go. Now, there's a lot to that. I mean, you know, you, obviously you want to make sure your neck joint is tight. Uh, if you've got a loose neck joint, even if you've got the right height here, you know, the glue's going to pull up over time because glue won't hold a gap. So you want to make sure when you put your neck on here that it's solid, tight, absolutely airtight. And if you have to shim it, whatever it takes, then get that angle correct and get the height correct and you'll be good to go. But you got to have an airtight joint right here. There's nothing more important when you're setting a neck. It's got to be airtight, period. 
You, you got any slop in there at all, if it wiggles just the least little bit, then you're wasting your time. Just give it up and give it to somebody else to fix because you're not going to get it. If that, if that satisfies you, you're not, you're not going to be satisfied very long. Make sure this is absolutely airtight. That's why you see me take the carbon paper and go in and out a gazillion times. I, you know, I show it on camera, but I do it more than you see on camera. And I go in and out and test and scrape light amounts and in and out, scrape and test, you know. And anyway, so if you get that and you get about a sixteenth of an inch here, uh, you know, millimeter and a half roughly, you're good to go. Now, if the fretboard's already on, and in this case, we have the fretboard on, and, and I'm telling you, this ain't going to measure right, because I know this guitar's messed up. But anyway, if you put it on here now, and you go across, it should be about, um, I don't know, a, roughly a millimeter, 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths, something like that, just a little less than before, uh, above, it should come... If it comes right to the top of your bridge, not, not including your saddle, if it comes right to the top of your bridge, you're probably okay. Uh, just a hair above the top of your bridge, you're, you're probably a little bit better off. So, but I'm talking just a hair, not very much. You know, so just about bridge height or just slightly above your bridge, you're probably just fine. But you don't want to get it a lot above your bridge, otherwise you're going to have a really tall saddle. So that's the, that's the methods I use. I do not try to use an exact angle number because there's too many variables, too many factors that get involved in that. Hope that makes sense to you. <clears throat> okay, moving on to the next thing here. Um, yeah, Wolf, Wolf Spirit there says, uh, there's 30 people waiting for you on the wrong thing. He, he has said that earlier. Hopefully they found us by now. Again, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Carolyn says, glad I found you. <laughs> yeah, me too, Carolyn. I'm glad you found me. Uh, Zappa says, I love hearing the crows in the morning uh, as little as I do in St. Louis. Yeah, you, in, you don't want to hear them there, but in the, in the country, it is kind of fun to hear them. Um, yeah, Dottie says, wow, finally found you. <laughs> I swear I don't know how that happened. I do not know how that happened because I'm pretty positive. I clicked the right stuff and everything was set up, ready to go. Uh, Thomas says, a cure for your arthritis, take a mild stroke amid your hands and go numb. I don't know what that means, honestly, Thomas. I, I, I know that when my hands are hurting, sometimes I can rub it and it makes the pain get 10 times worse. And I'm not exaggerating. Like I can, and I just like, ah, that just was the wrong thing to do. You know, like it just, you know, I hit the wrong spot and man. So I, I don't know. I, I just don't, I honestly don't know what to do about it. I, I, tried um, vibrating it quite a bit yesterday afternoon and that did seem to help yesterday afternoon in the day before it didn't help at all but yesterday afternoon it seemed to help so that's a, the only thing i've come up with so far besides the meloxicam is the vibration for me that seems to help i'm not even 100 percent sure that's helping but i think it does blackjack guitar uh Gathering of crows is called a murder of crows. Yes, that's one of those trivia questions. And yes, I do know that. Uh, Wolf Spirit, speaking of rats, maybe some free roaming cats would help control these critters. We have a lot of them in my place and we live in the far suburbs. Yeah, I, I definitely understand your point. I definitely get it. But why? I have a a little problem with cats and the problem with cats is they like they're just natural born killers and you know i'm talking in a farm setting i'm not talking about as a pet in your house that's a different thing and of course they're still natural born killers even in your house but it's a different controlled environment here the problem with it is uh out, when they're free roaming out here and our neighbor he for, he, had, he took a notion 10 years ago to have free roaming cats you know, around his barn. He ended up with like 20, 30 cats just running around his 
barns and stuff. Well, the problem with that is, first of all, they overpopulate pretty quick. Second of all, they get out into the woods and they start killing rabbits, squirrels, everything else. And they do it. Trust me for sure. They absolutely 100% do it. I'm going to tell you a story. Some of you are going to hate it. And I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's the truth. I ain't going to lie to you about nothing. Um, I was uh, back in one of my, uh, my far back, what I call my condo back there. And I was uh, trying to call up coyotes. Well, just so happened, three bobcats come in. Well, I don't like to shoot a lot of bobcats. I, you know, I don't feel like they're overpopulated or anything. But on the other hand, it don't hurt to control their population a little bit here and there. So out of the three bobcats, I thought, well, I'll take one of them. So I cut down on that one, and he just hit the ground. I thought, well, I got him. All right, so the other two bobcats ran off. Well, about that same time, I see this other cat taken off across the weeds. And I thought, looks like another bobcat. That's four. Well, that's too many. So I thought, and this, now I'm not lying to you. This was 180 yards away and it was running full speed. I mean, as fast as it could run. And just as it was jumping into the creek and I'm, and I, you know, I'm doing this just, you know, offhand. I don't have any way to rest or anything. I'm just, and I, squeezed the trigger and I thought, man, I nailed him. <laughs> you know, on the, he was on the fly and 180 yards away. And I just knew I hit him. So I went down there looking for him. Well, first of all, I didn't find either one of those cats. So the first bobcat that I thought I killed, he either I wounded him or scared him or something. I don't know what happened, but he was gone. So I didn't get any of those. And so I go looking for this other cat that jumped into the creek couldn't find it either, but I knew I hit that thing. I just, I was right on him, dead on him, and I knew I had to hit him. So about a week later, we're down there, and Tucker, the big dog, comes dragging a cat out of the creek. It was one of those wild, feral cats that my neighbor had uh, turned loose, is what it was. And again, I, I don't have any problem shooting a wild, feral cat either. Uh, ask Australia. They've had their problems with those kinds of things too. Uh, and, you know, you just... Yeah, they're good and bad. I, if you can keep them under control, uh, then cats like that around a barn are an excellent thing. But keeping them under control is kind of hard to do. Um, I mean, if you only have one cat and that's the only one around, you'll be fine. But one cat ain't going to do that much to help your rat population either. Trust me. Uh, it's a mess. It's really something. Uh, so anyway, that's what we do. And uh, good, bad, or indifferent, that's what we do. Um, let's see here. I'm going down through looking for more question marks and I get down to old Hickory, I think. Uh, yeah, it looks like that's the one. Good morning, Jerry. Could you make a playlist for your guitar build videos that would make them so much easier to locate? Well, old Hickory... It would be easy on your end, but it sure ain't easy on this end. And uh, it takes a lot longer to do stuff like that than you think. And I don't know where they are either. So I it, finding them all and yeah, it would be great. If I had help and had people doing that, I'd be glad to do that. But unfortunately, and I didn't even know about playlists until I had already put out five, six hundred, seven hundred videos. So yeah, it's a mess. But I, I, I feel your pain, and if, if there was a way, simple way to do it, I'd do it. But I just haven't got the time or the resources. Wave, wavy gravy. <laughs> uh, I, got, I did better today. I, I knew that's what that was supposed to say the last time, and I messed it up. Um, Jerry, did you happen to know Dale Small from Alba, Missouri? Dale was a great guy and premier banjo player. That name sounds vaguely familiar, but only vaguely. I don't think I knew him personally. Maybe I just heard about him or something. But no, I don't, I don't think I know him. Uh, Scott King, morning, Jerry. Will you be at the Mountain View uh, Bluegrass Festival? Uh, I, we're going the week of the 19th through the 22nd, and I think that's the week just before the big chili festival or whatever their festival is during that time 
I think the next week is the week they have that, and we try to avoid that. <laughs> so no, we won't be down there then because it's it's crazy crowded then. Carolyn Fike, maybe the system wanted to test our loyalty. Yeah, well, thanks for being loyal, Carolyn. I appreciate it. I don't know why stuff like that happens. Um, I really don't. Calvin Kraft says, honeybee stings. Well, I was a honeybee keeper for quite a few years. It did not help at all. And I was, I was already experiencing arthritis then, and it didn't help. I, a lot of this stuff, I think, is myth and just people's... Um, placebo effect. I really believe it. I'm sorry, but that's what I believe. Uh, you know, I, first of all, I don't think there is a cure for arthritis, period. End of discussion. I don't think so. So you're, you're going to have a tough time convincing me there is. The doctors all say that as well. And uh, there's plenty of medical evidence that you just don't fix it. Once you get it, or if you've got arthritis, it's just one of those deals that you've got and you either live with it or you just try to convince yourself it don't hurt, I guess. But, um, you know, again, I say again, my parents had it and uh, that's where I got it from. And I'm pretty positive that's the beginning and end of the story. And uh, nothing seems to help it. I don't care what I put on it. it. Nothing helps it. Bob Scott, cats should be kept in your house, not free running. Yeah, I agree with that, Bob. I Cats are, I got no... You know, I've got no problem with cats. I, I don't feel like they're bad, good, indifferent. I just, I have, I almost have almost no opinion on cats, honestly. But when they're out free ranging, they are born, natural born killers, trust me. And they will pretty much decimate the rabbits and everything else because they'll hide and the rabbits will come down the trail and man, they'll nail the rabbits. And, and we don't have enough rabbits around here as it is. And so when my neighbor started getting all those cats, I was just absolutely aggravated. I thought, doggone it. Of course, I never say nothing to any of my neighbors because I, you know, I don't want to create a, a war between neighbors either. But it was really aggravating when he had all those cats. They've thinned out way a whole lot now. I barely ever see a cat around anymore. So they've either died of natural causes or, or something. But, but that one was a feral cat that I shot that day. And uh, yeah, I knew I, I knew I'd hit that sucker, but I couldn't believe I hit him at that distance and moving that fast. Um, let's see. Tom Armstrong, morning. Could a fret wire be added to complete last fret on acoustic guitar at the sound hole? Perhaps a plate butted up at the end rising to height of previous fret. This is a sound hole. I do not know what you're talking about, Tom. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm a terrible reader, so it's, a lot of times it's just how I read it. Let me try reading it one more time. Could a fret wire be added to complete last fret on acoustic guitar at sound hole? Perhaps a plate butted up at the end, rising to height of previous fret. This is at sound hole. Got no idea. I just don't. I don't get that one. I don't. I don't know what you're trying to fix there. Sorry. Be careful, Jerry. Sue is watching. <laughs> What did I say this time? <laughs> There's no telling. I, I, you know, talk about free roaming cats. I have a free roaming mouth. <laughs> De the problem with too many barn cats is they can get a disease and wipe out the population of cats. Now, it wouldn't surprise me at all either. Uh, that's almost true with any kind of animal. You get too many deer, you get diseases like crazy. And uh, we've had that problem too. There, uh, a f uh, 10, 15 years ago, we had a blue tongue uh, disease come through the deer and we were finding deer left and right. And I, I think it was called blue tongue. I'm not positive about that, what the, what the specific disease was. But anyway, it, we were finding uh, dead deer in the creeks. They, they, the, apparently that disease sent them to water and we were finding them in the creeks everywhere. I mean, like just pretty much anywhere there was water, you were finding dead deer. And uh, so, you know, if you let any animal get overpopulated, coyote is, exact, is another ex example because of their mange and other diseases they get. But their mange is one of their biggies. 
uh, you you will be amazed how quickly Mother Nature uh, will take care of the situation. But unfortunately, it takes care of the situation kind of brutal. I mean, it's pretty darn brutal. If you've really been out, and, you know, people have a, a soft spot in their heart for animals. Okay, I get that. I'm kind of indifferent about the whole thing. I mean, I, 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 not, I, don't, I don't hate, I don't like. You know, it's just kind of, it just kind of is what it is. And that's just my opinion. And I'm sorry if that offends some p people, but that's just me. And I think it's because of the way I grew up. I, you know, I got beat every day <laughs> for not feeding an animal or for not cleaning out a stall or something, you know. So I'm just kind of indifferent about animals. That's just the best way I can explain it. And, but... I don't like to see anything suffer. I, nothing. I don't like to see an animal starved. I don't like to see an animal uh, neglected. I don't like to see Mother Nature killing animals the way that it kills them. And trust me, it kills them. So for me, whether you like hunting or not, whether you like me going out and shooting coyotes or not, I'd much rather go out there and knock off a coyote here and there and keep their population under control than to see them get in the shape they get into because I have seen it firsthand and witnessed it. And the next time I see one, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you so you'll believe what I'm telling you because it is nasty. It is really nasty. In fact, the, the last one I killed was so nasty, I couldn't bring myself to photograph it. Um, I'm not kidding you. It was that bad. If you'd have seen it, you would be going, oh my gosh. Yeah, you, you wouldn't believe it. You really wouldn't. Um, okay, moving on. Um, uh, the Freeze says, I actually feed my crows in the morning. They keep the owls and hawks away from my chickens. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, really. And actually, our for some reason, our crows have started hanging around our chicken coop area. And I don't really know why they've started that. But, but we've been noticing them down there right around where the pond and the chicken house is. That We notice them there quite often. And I don't know exactly what the draw is, but they're there a lot. Maybe that they're finding feed laying around there. I don't know. <clears throat> My neighbor's cats kill a lot of rabbits. Yeah, it, they do. I mean, seriously, cats kill a lot of rabbits. Way more than you would ever think, especially if they're feral like that. Uh, boy, they do. They kill a lot of them. Um, wavy Gravy. Years ago, a doctor discovered that a all nightshade vegetable contains substance that irritates arthritis. All nightshade vegetables. Well, you'd have to educate me on that one. I have no idea what a nightshade vegetable is. Uh, well, first of all, I don't eat vegetables, so there's very little <laughs> chance that it's going to affect me anyway. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, for the new viewers, I don't eat any vegetables. Zero, none, not one little tiny piece. And I mean, not a piece of an onion, not a piece of a pickle, not a piece of a green bean, nothing. Zero, none, not at all. I eat potatoes, corn, and rice. Those are the only things that are similar to vegetables that I eat. Uh, potatoes, tomatoes absolutely murder my arthritis condition. Well, if potatoes is the thing, then, you know, it... it I would die if I didn't eat them. So, you know, I don't have any options there because potatoes are one of the very few things I can actually eat. And if, if you're, again, if you're new and you don't know why that is, I was born what they call a taster. I can taste chlorophyll. When you can taste chlorophyll, you will not eat vegetables. Uh, I promise you, I guarantee you. And again, the only realistic example that I can really give you, and it's still not even a good example, because honestly, I think I could eat tree leaves before I can eat vegetables, and that's not kidding. I'm not kidding you. But if you went out and picked a whole big mess of tree leaves and put those as your salad, that's kind of what it's like for me to eat vegetables. It doesn't taste like food. It's not food, and that's the way vegetables are. They don't taste like food at all. And my... Uh, Seventh grandchild, Trinian, unfortunately, was born a taster. Uh, no, my kids weren't, uh, but it got passed on to Trinian. And it's real obvious. It was obvious that from the moment he started trying to eat solid foods, it was pretty obvious. He spit it all out, just like I did when I was a baby. It, it's, not a, it's not something you can control. You're just born that way, and you don't have an option. 
154 viewers. That takes us through the, the whole thing here. I think we're pretty much done. Anybody have any last minute questions or irritating uh, statements you want to make about all the things I've said today? <laughs> <laughs> I've probably irritated you, so you might as well come back at me. Um, to God be the glory. Yeah, there. I see Calvin made that comment there. Um, well, I guess I'm going to probably call this the end of the vlog and go out there and try to fix the title back up <laughs> so it'll make sense to people. Hit the like button, Zappa says. Thank you very much. I hope you guys will. And uh, the uh, subscriber count is, it's just like Heinz ketchup. It's making me wait. Remember those commercials? It's making you wait. <laughs> it's how slow it pours out of the bottle. Well, that's, uh, that's my subscriber count. It's uh, making me wait. We will see you tomorrow.